And again, I want to go later in the show, I want to reiterate why I even do any of this. Because again, for anybody who's just starting to listen or has been listening, and you think I do this because I like people, that I want to say, quote unquote, save people, please, I'm not anybody's savior, okay? I don't even like people, to be honest. I do not really like people. I want to be left alone. That's my, that's why really what, the goal I want out of this all. Okay, I want people to understand the non-aggression principle and the principles of self-defense. I want them to understand what true freedom is. I want them to understand what rights are and what rights are not. And I want to be left alone. And I want them to leave other people alone if they want to be left alone. I'm not in this for a popularity contest. I don't want to be liked. I don't want new friends. I don't want any new friends. I don't want you to like me. I don't care if you like me. All I want you to do is understand the information on your own. Go through it on your own. Make of what you will of it and then go do something with it. And you don't need to take it from me. It's not because it is me. Okay, you can go take it from somebody else. I don't care how you acquire it. Understand what's real. Stop believing in fantasy like authority and government. And stop advocating for human slavery by the continuation of those belief systems. That's all I care about. And I'm doing this not to serve people, but to serve truth. I've said that repeatedly. I don't even like people. Okay? I'm being totally and completely honest about this. I want to be left alone as much as possible. That's what the non-aggression principle is about. Leaving other people alone. That's the number one human right, is to be left alone. So I want to go back to the things I tell people. In this vitriolic, bitter speech, it's bitter. I'm bitter about even having to do this. I'm bitter that this is what my life has become. This is what I'm doing because there's a responsibility to do it and I'm fulfilling that responsibility. That's it. I know it's right. I do it because it's right. And, and don't tell me I don't, I don't, I can't choose to be bitter about that because I want my life to be something better than what it is right now. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not wrong for wanting not to have to do this here while I'm alive here on earth. Don't tell me that makes me any kind of a bad person because I don't want to teach ignoramuses what I already know. I don't want to do this. People say, well, why do you keep doing it? Because I have a responsibility. Because there's ignorant people, they're going to create total chaos in the world unless somehow their, their mind is taken out of the absolute garbage sewage state that it is in and brought up to a higher level of awareness and consciousness. Do I have to like that job? No. I'm cleaning out the sewers, folks. That's my job. I clean the sewers of the world along with many other people who do work like this. We are drudging up all of the garbage that has accumulated in the mass psyche of humanity, trying to somehow clean it out. That's what we are. We are garbage people. We are garbage haulers, you could look at it as. I told people it's like being a waiter, serving something to somebody, and you're waiting as in you're staying there waiting for them to catch up, waiting for them to take this into themselves so that they are as filled with the knowledge as, as other people have become, as very few other people have become. And that involves waiting a long time. That doesn't mean I'm their servant. I happen to be a waiter, like a waiter in a restaurant. It's a very appropriate name in green language terms because you're, you're, you're handing something, something to somebody that came from elsewhere Okay, that truth is actually putting the information on the plate. Then I'm taking it and saying, here, here it is. Take a look. Here it is. Here it's a, it's arranged like this. Take it, take it into yourself. And I'm sitting there waiting for them to be to catch up to be full with the the knowledge. So the term waiter is very appropriate for what this job is about. And I would also look at it as sanitation. I work in sanitation now mental, emotional, and spiritual sanitation. So how many people really would think that that's something that people would so love to do? 
No, but is it necessary? It's necessary. Is it a responsibility? It's a responsibility. That doesn't mean I like it or have to feel good about it. I want my life to live in peace to do what I want to do with it. I would like to go and learn some gardening techniques. I would like to um, get better as an artist. I do some artwork. I do digital graphics and manipulation of graphics, and I think I have a pretty good aesthetic eye. I've tried my hand at painting, and I think I have some talent there, but I would like to work on that more with my time and really hone artistic skills and capabilities, which I think are latent within me. And I don't spend that time doing that because I do work like this. You know, I would like to have more time that, you know, uh, do uh, other forms of, um, you know, uh, volunteering, maybe with animals or something. I love animals. I want to spend more time with my animals, but I spend time doing this work because this is the main responsibility in the world right now. If we don't want to see the world collapse to total and utter crap, quite frankly, which is well on the way to doing and is already most of the way there, to be quite honest. And you still have people nitpicking. So to these nitpickers, what I write is show me your big website with all your data that you've put thousands of free hours of work into accumulating. Where is it? You know where it is? That's where it is. It's nowhere. Nowhere. A big goose egg. Sound the gong. Press the buzzer. Zero. All the time. Not just some of the time. All of the time. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, I am not lying to you. 100% of every criticism I have ever received, I have asked, please show me your work that you have put out there that refutes this. And not one person ever writes back with a so much as a link. Where is your work? Nothing. Silence comes back, ladies and gentlemen, silence. And again, this is another part of why I'm going to vent on this show. I'm going to express vitriolic speech and I'm going to take a step back and reevaluate things. And I'm going to refocus my efforts in a different way. Okay. So that's what this first podcast is really ultimately all about. I want to reiterate why I do what I do. It's going to continue in a different form and ultimately why I feel like I need to take a step back because I'm burning myself out, trying to cast pearls before swine in many cases. And it's not to say I'm going to stop and withhold information because information isn't mine to withhold. It belongs to all of humanity. It belongs to the universe. Okay. The truth is no one's property. The truth doesn't belong to anyone. No one has a monopoly on it. You know, I'm not going to withhold anything or just stop doing what I'm doing, but I am going to do it in a slightly different fashion from this point forward. And for the people who truly want it, they'll get it. They'll, they'll, they'll go out and take it. And again, I'm, I'm cutting back on interaction with people. People have been disappointing me over and over and over and over. When I, when I want to have a little bit of faith in people, that maybe they're changing, maybe they're getting it. They always continuously disappoint me and show me my, whatever amount of hope or faith I may have had in humanity is misplaced. This is a totally ignorant, barbaric, um, lazy, cowardly, apathetic, mongrel animal race. And you could say, oh, you're slipping into a dark, degenerated, poison worldview. Maybe so, folks. I don't know. In many ways, how, the level of ignorance I see most people at and the level of just where their mindset is at in general, instead of actually doing something, I sit back and think, maybe these dark occultists were, were correct. I don't know. You know, I, I almost see myself not totally agreeing with them, but saying, you know, I can understand why they think the way that they do. That's all. I can understand why they think the way that they do and why they want to do what they want to do to people. That doesn't mean I think it's right, but I can understand it.
I can understand where it's coming from in their mind because that's there's a small part of me that still not necessarily thinks like that, but is capable of at least resonating and seeing why they, they have such a level of total contempt for people who are existing in this state of willful ignorance because I'm, I'm done with the excuse that it's not willful ignorance. It is willful ignorance, ladies and gentlemen. It has nothing to do with nescience, with not knowing because you had no ability to know. People who are in a state of not knowing in this world today have chosen that state. They are willfully choosing to ignore information that is all around them capable of liberating their mind, capable of helping humanity out of the prison that it is currently trapped in. So please do not try to convince me that this is not willful ignorance of the truth, because it absolutely is. To anybody that wants to write to nitpick or to complain about what I happen to be doing or not doing or other people happen to be doing or not doing, well, go put out your own message then. Go do your own work. Go do something else. People who complain are usually doing squat. So, I mean, that's really all I have to say about these armchair quarterbacks. They're, they don't really understand the nature of the situation. But I would just love, to, if I had the capability of just putting one of these people in the evil, into the midst of the evil, and the psychopathy that you would witness at such a gathering... There is no way you would ever, ever again waste your time writing to anybody, no matter who it is, trying to tell people the truth about what's really going on in the world and waste your time nitpicking on any of their other, their, their work, no matter how off you may have thought one particular thing or any number of particular things they said was, because you would recognize in your own mind where you're at. You'd recognize it, boom, like that in a heartbeat. And you would know the level of evil that you're really trapped within. And you wouldn't waste energy on stuff like that. You would not waste energy for another second on stuff like that. I mean, you have, people have to be completely out of their gourds. I mean... I'm just, I'm dumbstruck. I'm dumbfounded. I don't, there's, I'm speechless. I don't even know what to say. You know, people will nitpick on the tiniest of things about an aspect of the monetary system. They'll nitpick on a word etymology. They'll nitpick on the interpretation of a symbol. You, you I mean, if you see the emails that I get, that where people just want to nitpick on something instead of actually do their own work. Who cares whether you don't accept any of my interpretations? Who cares, quite frankly? How about that? Let's just say it just like that. Go do your own homework. I told you this from day one on the podcast, not to believe me. Take what you will and leave the rest. Go do your own homework, come to your own conclusions, and then act upon it. Okay? I'm not interested whether you agree or disagree with me. I don't care. All I care about is if you understand the non-aggression principle and you're willing to leave other people alone who want to be left alone. And you don't advocate for the slavery of other people through things called authority and government that are not real, have never been real, and are never going to be real. It's a claim on somebody else's body. It's a claim on somebody else's property. It's a claim on somebody else's labor. That's all these things ever have been. And that equates to slavery. They've only ever been slavery. And if you're advocating, advocating them, you're advocating human slavery. Whether you understand that or not, it's true. That's what I care about whether people understand. Get the heart of it first. You want to nitpick on the details? You're wasting your time and everybody else's. The, the core message is the important aspect of this. Understand that and teach it to other people. That's the best usage of your time. People say, well, other people write to me and they thank me for everything. And they say, what a wonderful, great job I'm doing.
And I, I don't even look at emails like, like that as so wonderful and great. They don't make me feel v that great. I mean, I, I'm glad people appreciate what I'm doing, but you want to know the emails that make me feel good? Somebody sends me a link with what they're doing. That's an email I feel good about getting. Okay. You know, and I'll go and look at stuff like that because you're actually taking some action. You're actually doing something. There's more people in the world since you got involved in doing what you're doing, putting this information out into the world. So I feel good about those. I don't feel as good about when people say, Mark, you're doing such a great job. Thank you so much for this information. As I do when people say to me, I took an example from what you did and I did this. Or, you know, even if they say, I don't agree with what you did here and I did this instead, I would feel better about that. Because at least they're doing something instead of doing nothing. The armchair quarterbacking is going to do nothing to change our situation, folks. Get involved. Get on the field. Choose a side and get on the field to battle. Because this is a war. And if you don't understand that, you don't understand what's going on. You're in the middle of a spiritual war. And if you're doing nothing to put information out into the world to change other people's mindset and worldview, you are not helping. You're actually helping the other side. You're helping the dark side. If you say you want true freedom and you say you don't want tyranny, if you're not getting involved in actually putting something out there and doing something on the battlefield, then you're, you're actually helping the other side as far as I'm concerned. Because that's what they want in action. And I'm telling you, the people who are really running this show right now, the people who are, who are the owners, who are, who are the slave masters, these dark occultists are, are laughing themselves into a stupor. They are laughing so hard that they have people in the mindset that all they'll do is attack each other. Divide and conquer. And people could say, well, you're doing the same thing right now. No, I'm not, ladies and gentlemen. I am pointing it out to explain to people how stupid it is. And I'm not going to spend more time on this topic. Okay, I'm going to, future shows are going to be dealing with more information and information dense material. So I, this is the podcast where I'm trying to explain to people, this is what we need to get out of doing. I'm explaining, these are the people who are doing this. These armchair quarterbacks and people who think everybody's a shill because they said one thing they don't agree with. Oh, he said he didn't talk about this aspect of, of this, and so he must be a shill in trying to hold that back. Well, it doesn't occur to somebody, maybe he didn't want to focus on that aspect, or maybe he doesn't even know about that aspect. No, that doesn't occur. You're automatically an agent of, of the state. You're automatically a shill or a disinfo agent. This is nonsense, total nonsense thinking. And I'm telling you, the real owners are just, they're pissing their pants. They, they, they are the belly laughs that I have personally heard come out of the mouth of a cultist. I, I want to find somebody to draw for me a scene that I witnessed at a ritual that I attended. If there is any artist out there that could paint, etch, sketch, draw, you know, do a cartoon, I don't care, whatever. If there's any good visual artist that can paint, depict a picture of a ritual that I attended because I want somebody to try to put on paper the demented psych psychopathic evil laugh just to and maybe I'll even do, try to find some sound recording of the of a laugh that it can even approximate the laugh of this occultist that I once heard who was laughing at a cop who was actually guarding the house while the ritual was being conducted. He was actually laughing and calling this cop our pets, our pets, while he was gorging himself on food and smoking a cigar. In this dark gray suit with this ugly tie and just, he, I'm going to go on, on 
sound pages and just try to find a deep laugh that approximates how this psychopath was laughing at this cop. And, and it just like, if I could put somebody there for an instant, I just wish I could go back in time and just put somebody in that position to just show them who their owners are. I, it's, it's my only wish, to be honest, because then your whole worldview would change in a heartbeat. You would see what your the level of evil and sickness that you're really up against, and you wouldn't waste one iota of energy nitpicking on the people who are actually trying to change this thing.